The product I have with me today is an interesting one, and it's not because it's from a crazy new product category or something I haven't really seen before, but it's because Lenovo has actually disappointed me a little bit with the final device that they were actually shipping. It's simply of a tech spot here, and I'm of course talking about the Lenovo ThinkPad Helix 2014, the new model with Core M inside. And although there are a few improvements over the last generation model, the final device that I just got with me today just doesn't really live up to the ThinkPad brand that we've all been associated with as being a very popular business class product and having some very solid devices throughout the lineup over the past couple of years. The Lenovo ThinkPad Helix was first announced at CES 2013. It seemed like a very cool product. It was a business class tablet that could be docked into a keyboard base, giving you the best of both worlds, having that powerful Intel Core CPU and 11.6 inch display in the tablet, but also that keyboard and laptop use case that is better for productivity tasks. And when 2014 came along and Intel announced their Broadwell CPUs, 14 nanometer, low power, but also still powerful enough, it was time for a refresh of the product that would make it thinner and lighter, fanless, and also to deliver better battery life. Unfortunately though, as I mentioned earlier, the ThinkPad Helix isn't quite as nice as I would have liked, although I will start with the positives. The 11.6 inch 1080p IPS LCD display on the front of the tablet is quite good in terms of its color quality. It's also crisp thanks to that 1080p resolution, which is great for either reading text or viewing images. It also has good viewing angles, and thanks to 400 nits of brightness, it's perfect for readability either indoors or out. There are also a number of handy features found around the Helix. On the right hand side, sealed under a flap is the full-sized USB 3.0 port that is very handy for attaching peripherals or external storage without needing to adapt to micro USB. You also get under another flap a micro SD card slot for expanding on the 128 or 256 gigabytes of internal storage in this device and there's also a micro SIM slot which you can add in a SIM card for LTE connectivity on the go. You also find a fingerprint sensor that is quite reliable and responsive and adds a bit of extra security to the tablet and there's also a very very responsive and handy stylus that you can use to annotate documents, PDFs and even draw on the display with relative ease. I also want to touch on briefly the Intel Core M CPU that is found inside the ThinkPad Helix. I first got hands-on time with this particular model in the Lenovo Yoga 3 Pro, and it didn't really impress me there too much, delivering performance and battery life lower than the previous generation. However, with the ThinkPad Helix, it's basically the complete opposite. Battery life is significantly better than the previous model, delivering eight hours of life that I could verify during my day-to-day -day usage of the tablet, but it also features a smaller battery, that, so that's actually pretty impressive power of efficiency for Intel's chip that is supposed to be power efficient. Performance I also saw was slightly better than the Yoga 3 Pro, although not as good still as those previous generation products, but typically speaking, it's perfectly fine for day-to-day -day usage. So in this particular device, Intel's Core M CPU is definitely a win. However, and this is where some of the downsides of the ThinkPad Helix start coming into play, I did notice some odd performance issues with the tablet being undocked from the keyboard. When the two are paired together, the performance is perfectly normal from the Core M CPU. But when you take the tablet out of the keyboard base, the CPU seems to underclock by around 300 megahertz, which might not seem like a giant amount in the grand spectrum of the CPU and its overall clock speed, which can go up to 2.6 gigahertz in turbo boost mode. However, it does equate to a 15 to 20 percent performance reduction and I don't really see why this is happening because the keyboard dock doesn't include an external battery at least the basic ultrabook keyboard doesn't include an external battery and there's no extra cooling solutions that mean that the downclock is really necessary when the keyboard is not docked to the tablet I just don't really understand why this is happening and why Lenovo has decided to reduce the performance of the tablet when undocked from the keyboard I think it's pretty unnecessary and quite odd behavior but the main issue with the ThinkPad here Helix is not the tablet itself, but the mediocre Ultrabook keyboard dock that is included out of the box. The fact that there's no hinge on this keyboard dock makes it less of a laptop style attachment and more of a simple stand for the tablet that isn't as useful or as handy for business users on the go. Admittedly, the keyboard is, well, it's reasonable, it's a little bit cramped, although travel on the keys is quite good, and you get a couple of handy features like a storage port for the pen and an additional USB port, as well as a flat storage mode for the tablet allowing you to take around the ThinkPad Helix as a combination, sort of a flat laptop style 
closed shell. However, this doesn't really make up for the fact that it's not really a tablet laptop convertible hybrid style product if you can't use it as a laptop without that hinge. Also the latching mechanism that attaches the keyboard dock to the tablet is flimsy and doesn't really hold the tablet in place so it's prone to being knocked out of place if you accidentally tap the tablet a little bit too hard. The keyboard dock also doesn't come with an additional battery which along with the hinge was a feature of the original ThinkPad Helix's keyboard dock. So when it comes to the second generation model it's a bit of a downgrade on that front. However you can get both the hinge and the additional battery back if you decide to purchase the Ultrabook Pro keyboard which is available as an optional extra. However it's definitely disappointing that the Ultrabook Pro keyboard isn't the only keyboard that is available and bundled with the ThinkPad Helix out of the box because quite frankly the standard Ultrabook keyboard that's provided is not up to scratch. And finally, the design of the ThinkPad Helix isn't all that flash. Admittedly, Lenovo were focusing on functionality over form and they did manage to make the tablet a little bit lighter than the previous generation model. However, I would have liked to have seen a bit more of an exciting or innovative design used rather than the boring design that they did choose for this particular device. So would I recommend the Lenovo ThinkPad Helix for its asking price of around a thousand US dollars? And the answer is, well, not with the included Ultrabook keyboard. The idea of having a tablet and laptop hybrid device from Lenovo with business oriented features like USB 3.0 port, fingerprint scanner, pen support, a great display, and powerful Intel Core M internals is all well and good, but you really need to make a solid keyboard dock that the tablet can actually dock into, making it a fantastic product, and Lenovo hasn't really executed well enough with the keyboard that's included. I would maybe recommend checking out this product if you are going to buy the Ultrabook Pro keyboard, but that is an optional extra that will cost you more, even though it does look a little bit decent. So definitely check out the options relating to the Ultrabook keyboard for the Lenovo ThinkPad Helix, but the standard model that you get straight out of the box with the base model, again for a thousand US dollars, is not something that I could recommend by itself. And that's it for this review of the Lenovo ThinkPad Helix. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel for more reviews, unboxings, and hands-on coming in the future. If you want to check out the full written review of the ThinkPad Helix with benchmarks and more analysis, definitely check that out on techspot.com. Thanks guys, this has been a TechSpot video review.